All right, this is our final tutorial for the tools that a photographer would use in Photoshop CS5. We're going to start this one with the eraser tool. And the eraser tool erases uh, things that are on that layer. With this being a single layer image, it doesn't do us a lot of good. It's just going to erase to white. So that doesn't do us any good. Where it would do us some good is if we had a couple of layers we would erase something that's on the top layer and then what we would see here in where it's white now is what is below it on the bottom layer but I really don't use this eraser tool I prefer to use layer masks uh, which we'll cover in a different tutorial it's much more versatile and and flexible and and forgiving as well the next tool is the gradient tool and let me go to a white uh, image to show you what happens here. The gradient tool is going to uh, take you from the foreground color to the background color. In this case, black is the foreground, white is the background. It's going to take you there gradually. So you just click and drag a line to show you to show Photoshop where you intend to go when you release it. Uh, leaves you this gradient and this can be very useful for uh, designing graphics or something but as a photographer where it comes in handy again is in layer masks um, if you have it in the layer mask the effect of that layer is going to show up really well here but gradually it's going to fade out to where it's not showing up at all here if this were the layer mask so um, the main purpose for this gradient tool for me as a photographer is in um, layer masks. Okay, now next is the blur tool. And there's intensities up here. And let's go to 100. I w if I were using the blur tool, I would usually use it... Uh, you know much lower probably in the 20s but just to give you an example of what it can do just zoom it in and oftentimes it takes you several swipes but you can start to get a picture um, just a, a few strokes of, of the pen on the blur tool how this is blurred much more than the other eye and coming back um, if you want to selectively blur something that's an easy way to do it. Uh, I don't use it a lot, but it's available. Um, sharpen tool. I might use that on the eyes on occasion for the same thing, just it does the opposite. Sometimes for me, uh, I get too much artifacting when using the sharpen tool, so I don't tend to use that a lot. The smudge tool, I don't really use that at all either. And what it does, let me show you here, it just smudges things. Now you might find that is uh, something that is good artistically for certain projects, uh, but here as you can see it's taken up a lot of processing power from my computer, so to do a whole lot of that you, you know, it's not really practical. But you can see it has some nice effects to it. All right. Let me see if it's going to give me my computer back. Um, so it did finally. You can see the effects, and that can kind of be neat, especially if you're doing something artistic. But it's not something that I use a whole lot. The dodge tool and the burn tool. The dodge is going to lighten things and the burn tool is going to darken things. Now you want to be really uh, low on this exposure level or else it's just going to do too much. But if, if something was too dark in a certain area you can use it to lighten things. But let me take a few strokes and just see how bright that's getting and that's just way too much. Uh, again, you want to do it slowly if you if you do it at all. Uh, burn tool, it's really handy. Let me raise the size of this. 
for burning the edges, making it darker and kind of giving it a vignette feel. That can be really helpful in boosting the contrast. So that can be something that, that can be really effective. Um, the last in there is a sponge tool. And the sponge tool can either desaturate, meaning turn to black and white, or to saturate. And I like to saturate things. And let me, oh, it, I need to select there and get bigger. And let's see what it does. It's brightening, brightening the, the background up, but in reality, what it's doing is intensifying the color. And so there are some things that this can be a very useful tool for. And the last one that we're going to touch on is the text tool. The horizontal type. You can just click there. Let's get a bigger font. Bigger than that. And let's make it white. And just type that in. We have um, here's a use for the move tool to move it around a little bit. Um, there's a lot you can do with that. Plenty of different fonts. The other tool in here is the vertical tool type, which we can do this. Now well, Jennifer put that in F, and so you can go vertical with it. So there's a lot of tools that you can use, and there's even some more. Uh, many of them are primarily for graphic designers, but just play with these tools and figure out what they do.